In this lesson, we will look at the different control charts for attributes and provide examples of when to use which. And hello again to this lesson, which essentially has two learning objectives. At the end, you should know the differences between the various control charts. Furthermore, you should be able to select the appropriate control chart for a specific application. For this purpose, this lesson is divided into two chapters. In the first chapter, we look at the different control charts for attributes. In the second, we discuss when to use which control chart. This picture shows the relationship between the various characteristics and the control charts used. The different characteristics are shown on the left and the different control charts on the right. The quantitative characteristics shown on the left can be divided into two different categories. First, the variable characteristics. These are all characteristics that can be measured. They always have a value and a unit. Examples of this would be the length, hardness, weight, surface roughness or tensile strength of a component. But we don't want to go into detail about them here. Second, there are the attributive characteristics. Those are all characteristics one can only count. On the right side, we have the different control charts for attributive characteristics with a white and yellow background. These are also called Schuhart charts, named after American Walter Andrew Schuhart. As you can see, there are six control charts for attributive characteristics. Control charts for attributes are used to plot quality characteristics that can be measured and expressed numerically or can only be counted. We will go into more detail on these charts in a moment using various examples. Let's start with the different types of control charts for attributive characteristics. Before we get to the control charts for attributive characteristics, a few basic considerations. Let's take the diameter of this piston, which has a nominal size of 10 mm. This is also its permissible maximum. Its minimum allowable size is 9.978 mm. As previously discussed in the overview of characteristics and control charts, such a characteristic is called a variable. So it's measurable. The alternative would be, for example, a simple pass-fail test. Here you have the choice between an actual measurement of the diameter, for example with a caliper or an outside micrometer, or a purely attributive pass-fail test with a limit jaw gauge. Based on a pure pass-fail test, only a few conclusions can be drawn about the process. Therefore, variable testing should be preferred whenever possible. The evaluation of the measurement results allows conclusions to be drawn about the process in terms of spread and process location. It may also be easier to assign outliers to a special cause. All important information if there are problems with the process. There are basically two types of control charts for attributes. First, control charts for the number or proportion of non-conforming units and second control charts for the number of non-conforming per unit. A unit can for example be a single part such as a screw or a die cast part. However, a unit can also be an assembly or even the end product. A pile of screws is shown in the photo on the left. All screws should have a blue self-adhesive coating. Let's say 
there are a thousand screws. As can be seen in the red circle, one screw is missing this blue coating. So we have 1000 screws or units in general and one of them is defective because this coating is missing. A zinc die cast part can be seen on the right hand side. This one part is now the unit under consideration. This one unit has two defects. Once the blow hole or sink hole on the left and once the missing tooth on the right. Next, let's take a closer look at the different charts in detail. Let's start with the control charts for the number or proportion of non-conforming. There are three different control charts. The X chart, the P chart and the NP chart. The X chart is used when one wants to monitor the number of defective units. The sample size can be constant or variable. The underlying distribution model is the binomial distribution. How to use this to calculate the limits for the control chart is the subject of another lesson. The P chart does not monitor the number, but rather the proportion of defective units. Again, the sample size can be constant or variable. Here, the underlying distribution model is the nominal distribution. The NP chart is again for the number of defectives. The normal distribution is used as the distribution model. Now we come to the control charts for the number of defects per unit. Here we also have an X chart. And there is also a C chart and a U chart. The X chart is used for the number of defects per unit. The sample size can be constant or variable. The underlying distribution model for calculating the limits is the Poisson distribution. As with the other charts, the calculation of these limits is explained in other lessons. The C chart is not used for the number of defects per unit, but for the number of defects per sample. Where is the difference? In the case of the X chart, the unit under consideration was a single part. In the case of the C chart, the unit under consideration is, for example, one meter of a 10 meter long weld. This one meter represents the sample from the 10 meter long weld seam. The limits of the control chart are calculated using the normal distribution. Let's move on to the last chart, the U chart. This is used for the number of defects per examined units. Note the plural units, not unit. Next, let's look at when to use which control chart. Control charts for attributes, such as the P, C or a U chart, are used when a characteristic cannot be measured. So basically, there is no variable characteristic. They are also used when the product quality is judged based on defects, such as in complex assembly processes. Examples would be a missing washer or warning light not connected. As already mentioned at the beginning, control charts for variable characteristics have advantages over control charts for attributes in certain situations. The process location and the spread of a process can be monitored with these. This means that their information content is significantly higher. So they are a better tool for serial processes that continually struggle to meet required specifications. Or when control charts for attributes have previously proven to be unsuitable. Because of the higher information content mentioned before, they are used for troubleshooting or problem solving. However, it can also be 
that compliance with the process stability and capability needs to be demonstrated and documented. Last but not least, X charts. This means control charts for individual values for both attributive and variable characteristics are also used when automation allows the measurement of each part or when the periods between the individual tests are too long. Well, that was a lot of new information. Therefore, I would like to conclude by repeating the two most important key messages. There are basically two types of control charts for attributes. A. For non-conforming units and B. For a number of non-conformities or defects per unit. Control charts for variable characteristics should be preferred where A. Compliance with process stability and capability needs to be demonstrated and documented. And B. For troubleshooting. If you found this lesson helpful, please let me know and leave a comment. Thank you for that. Take care and see you next time. Bye.